He holds the adjacent appointment as an assistant professor at College of Material Science and Engineering in Beijing and visiting scientist at Fudan University, China. He was a research scientist at uh, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation, that is in Los Angeles, US. He was a research scientist now, at uh, still he is Tarasaki as a Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research, is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Biomedical Innovation. That is a research scientist at Eastern Asia, Tarasaki Institute of Bi
is fixed in the human body with the kind of the tissue where it fits this kind of the mechanism is comes in the picture and there are also kind of the intermolecular bonding such as kind of human covalent and non covalent bonding uh, is the most important factor here so if you see this is a liquid tissue adhesive and again so apply developed a tissue adhesive and tissue adhesive is essentially liquid and we should consider that should be injected so if we inject this tissue adhesive with a tissue for example there is a kind of the crack between the two tissues so we are adding this liquid adhesive so what comes in the picture as i told you and this is the monomer this is the this is the monomer and macromer polymer that means this polymer get crossing with each other and they harden with each other but what's the problem here is the underwater bonding for example this tissue adhesive you are using from the laparoscopic surgeries in the inside the blood environment so there is another issue comes in the picture and there is a hydration layer formation because as you know the, this is a mostly hydrophilic so due to the hydrophilic the water molecules you know they makes a thin layer of the structure over this particular tissue and that actually hinder the applications of the tissue for that also the, the, to 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 meet that challenge also we attempted some methodology that how we can introduce some kind of the hygroscopic you know uh, some molecules inside the tissue adhesives so that this hygroscopic molecule can tightly absorb the water instantly and during the kind of applications and that's how the things comes in the picture if you see the materials there are two kind of the tissue adhesive so a lot of research is going on but there are few groups around the world is working because developing a tissue adhesive is a very challenging and takes sometimes number of years also because if you see there are only in the market there are two kind of the tissue adhesive exists there is a cyanofilled glue and mostly electrode based implants can be fixed to this kind of the tissue adhesive and there is cyanofilled glue and this is the tissue and here the positive attribute of this tissue adhesive adhesive is adhesion strength in the form of megapascal which is good but however this is a tissue toxicity because they produce a lot of kind of leaches and this leaches is toxic to the human health so we need to avoid this kind of adhesive even though its adhesion strength is in the form of mega pascal but however if you see the fibrin cement most of the hospitals if you go for the they are using this kind of the fibrin cement so if the electrode is adhered with this particular tissue adhesive say for example you are fixing a tissue and that's a tissue friendly because it's particularly is a bioactive and very strong bioactive because it's a biodegradable like fibrin cement simply the blood clotting so when the blood clotting happens so you can see there is a fibers these are fibrin fibers and this fibers are used in the industrial process and they process this kind of fibers and they produce this kind of fibrin cement but however you can see the poor adhesion so to meet that challenge we have two kind of the adhesives one is polysaccharide based and peptide dendrimer and we focus this kind of peptide dendrimer because this guy can change for example this is a uh, we have dendrimers of the different generation for example generation 1 generation 2 generation 3 generation 4 and generation 5 and we if you increase the generation so you can get a higher bands branch structures so we have n number of ways to tune this particular kind of the tissue adhesive that for example we are using the then this kind of a peptide dendrimers and we can get a rapid bonding adhesives and have the high adhesion strength so we also need a on demand tissue friendly polymer adhesive with good adhesion strength why on demand because sometimes you need the curing on demand so you do not need always a cured adhesive from the outside for example you are doing some kind of joining the two blood vessels inside so you want a catheter that to pass to the particular area and you need at the time of you know the catheter reach to the particular surface or a particular you know blood vessels then only you can join so that place you can apply the uv light or whatever the heat curing measure and you can join so in this context uh, we focus the fifth generation of the polymer because this is the polyamide amine which is a dendrimer and it has a lot of branch chain is the amine groups and this amine groups if you can say you can tune from the g1 to g5 why we consider g5 if you see the g5 the highest mechanical strength can be obtained from the g5 in the form of the kilopascal so this is the g5 and we grafted with the bromodiazine and bromodiazine is a particular molecule where there is a actually this is a kind of like a, you can form the free radicals so these free radicals for example you are uh, simulating with the light of 365 nanometer let's say uva rays and with a certain time like few minutes so you can generate a lot of free radicals you know when there is a cut inside the blood vessels or when there is a cut inside the tissue so you do have a lot of free radicals and those free radicals free radicals will combine and they can form a covalent linkage by which they can form a very strong adhesion in the surface so we can get a carbon based picket because sir because this carbon has a single bond single electron so this is forming carbon and your covalent your you have free radicals and these free radicals with carbon and they can form a strong covalent union 
So in this case, you can get on-demand curing because this amine group, you can change the grafting percentage. For example, this bromodiazerin is grafted over this tree, right? So if I can grafting 20% of the bromodiazerin, let's say 30% of the, or 30% or 50%, we can cure the surface. But only one problem I will tell you later. So this is the, the tunable, we can get a tunable module as well as we can get a weight addition. Because any addition you develop, you need a weight addition property. Otherwise, this addition cannot be applied. This addition cannot be applied on the surface. This is a big problem. But there is one problem because as I told, that 30% of the tree is grafted by the bromodiazerin. How about other 70%? Other 70% amine is exposed. And this amine has the positive charge domains. Usually, these positive charge domains create a lot of blood clotting. So, when there is a blood clotting inside, so you cannot do surgical applications. So, in such a case, so you should be ensured that there should not be blood clot or thrombosis. You see, this is a biomaterial surface. Let's say our bioadhesive is a biomaterial surface, and this is the adhesive layer applied to the surface. And when there are platelets, when the blood flows, the platelets adhere on the substrate immediately. So, we need a surface that should create anti platelet formulations or anti platelet properties. So, in order to do that, so we tried some kind of attempts that we have some kind of biohemocompatible modifier, for example, heparin. You know, heparin is used for the you know, blood preventing blood clotting, right? So, we use the heparin, we other some kind of other kind of technology, I'll tell you. This is the acyl chloride we have used because we grab this NH2 groups, this amine groups, in order to have a attenuated of the surface. And again, we have used the positive charge heparin because you know these are kind of, sorry, negative charge heparin because this positive charge, positive charge domain can be bind with the negative charge and they can form a neutral surface. At the same time, if you use the sodium alginate, sodium alginate is a long chain polymer. If you use this kind of the polymer, you can still attenuate this kind of the surface. So this is the first time we attempted this kind of work. And actually we find a very nice result that we attenuate all the cationic surfaces and we incorporate a different kind of antiphony component by which we can develop the adhesive where actually when we flow the blood over the substrate, you can see a lot of platelet is adhered over the substrate when the adhesion. But if you use the terminal tapping method, so you can still reduce the platelet addition. This is what is our goal. But if you are using heparin, you can still reduce. If you are using sodium alginate, you can still reduce. That means you can create some kind of the anti platelet formulation. The beauty of the heparin and the beauty of the sodium alginate is that you can see some kind of the platelets are more spherical. So, spherical reflects that they do not have the pseudocodial structures, that means they are not activated on the subsurface. That means this is a pure anti platelet formulation that can be explored for some kind of you know other purposes where actually for the to, to do some kind of the internal surgery, particularly for the laparoscopic surgery. So again, we started working with some kind of goal. That is how to how to introduce some kind of the plasticizing agent like polyethylene glycol. We know this. We wanted to make this adhesive is viscous. So how to inject? This is the big challenge. So to make it injectable, so we tried to use some kind of plasticizer that is PEG 400. And PEG 400 is very well known about the biocompatibility and blood compatibility. So this can say this can attenuate the structure of the, you know, the total the whole amine content of the surface on the surface. So in this way, we can get the macro structures, this macro polar structure. So sometimes this can be used as an injectable scaffold, and we can have a tunable modulus, we can have a strong bioadhesion. So in this way, the another positive attributes I told you that weight addition is very important, and also we need to add, as I told, inside to working inside the adhesive, the if, if there is a cut, so immediately there is an exudate. Right? So, there is a, some kind of watery surface. If I apply an adhesive, adhesive will not attach in the surface. This is a big challenge. So, in order to do that, we applied the PEG. This PEG actually, what it does, it's a hygroscopic uh, content. So, it's a hygroscopic, you know, chemical moieties. So, which can, you know, absorb the water first and then it will surf, then it will surf, apply on the surface. In this way, actually, adhesion strength is very strong and you can get a high interfacial adhesion. And the beautiful thing is that when you and when you see the structure over the, this kind of adhesive, you can find very nice porous structures. And these are the pores, and sometimes this can be used as a scaffolds because if you somebody is from a material and biological engineering, so you know the scaffolds are used for the tissue building applications. So we need especially some kind of the injectable scaffold. So you can use this kind of the you know the, the particular glue as an injectable scaffold. And the beauty of this glue is when we increase the peg percentage. So we could reduce the platelet addition. 
That means with a high fake percentage formulation, we can use this in the laparoscopic domains in the internal surgery. So this is the uh, importance of this work. And another work is like sometimes we need uh, we need another the, the the adhesive of another level of the strain. So in order to do that, what we did we didn't use the binary adhesive. We used ternary adhesive. That means we use the polyethylene glycol 400 initially. So what we do is we conjoin this polyethylene glycol 400 with the you know high molecular weight of the PVC. So we create some kind of another molecule and then we use to formulate. Then we use to add this adhesive. So what happened? Like the addition, the modulus become you know extremely important for us in this case. For example, if you are using in case of bone, for example, you want to you know attach the two bone pieces. So in this case, this adhesive is very important. So Another kind of, the, this is a very uh, interesting work that we, we worked over. That what we did is like when we do the platelet addition studies, so we usually have the PRP, that is called platelet risk plasma. You might have seen in the, just in the laboratories, the clinical diagnostic laboratories. So you do have some kind of the, you know, supernatant and you do not have hypernatant. So this supernatant structure we called as the PRP, that is platelet risk plasma. And this platelet risk plasma is a high risk in the growth factor, right? So they have the very high potential of the regenerating the surface. So what we did, this adhesive is the semi-synthetic, we call it as a cocktail. So why? Because this adhesive is a semi-synthetic one. So we started adding this kind of the PRP, the platelet is plasma to this particular adhesive, and we create a cocktail. And this cocktail we apply to the human, to, to, the, to the animal models. So we, you can, the detail, you know, overall structure can be like this. This is autologous PRP, this is a PVZ, and we apply the plasma glue. We call it as a plasma glue. Initially, we call it as a, this is, this is called as a, this is called as a fibro glue, this is called as a plasma glue, because if you see, this is the skin glue. And we tried some kind of the experiment in animal models. So usually, we use some kind of the mice to that. And in the flow cytometric analysis, we could write the 25% inflammation, the host cell response can be only 25%. So there is a 25% reduction in the host in, in, that is called response, that is called inflammation. And inflammation is a, a nice indicator of this particular, you know, only link. If you see, the only link, the only link is very prominent in this case, particularly the plasma glue applications. So we use this kind of the technology to, 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 to cure the full thickness wounds. So this is one of the technology. And another technology that we are currently employing that we have the Kamam G directory and we, in our lab, we created the cerium oxide nanoparticles and this cerium oxide nanoparticles we can functionalize with the, with the silent myotids. And this silent myotids functionalized nanoparticles are very well dispersible and they are having the therapeutic properties. So we added the cerium oxide nanoparticles to this adhesive and what happens in the preliminary experiment we find the activated, not only the activated platelets, we could find an interwoven structures with the fibrous structures. And this fibrous structure can be used for the wound sealing applications, particularly wound sealing application, because at the hemostat, we call it, it is called induced hemostat. For example, we need a instant blood, you know, blood loss. There is a, to preventing the instant blood loss, we can use this kind of thing. So we, 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 we recently sent some kind of samples to the hot medical center in Beijing to use some kind of the animal soil. And another thing is that I told you the UV curing, and there is another kind of the curing for the electroactive implants. When you use the, this adhesive in the electroactive implants, for example, heart and other kind of the muscle tissue, so we need something that should be cured inside, in vivo. For example, inside, we, our muscle and, you know, electro nerves have their own potential, and this potential can also create certain kind of the voltage, and this voltage can cure this kind of the, you know, um, the adhesive very well. And this papers we have published in very high journals, influential journals. And if you see, this is this is heart, brain, and muscle and nerves. This can be this can be used as an electroactive implant. And this we call as a 3D ID because this is a 3D printed graphene interdigitated electrode. So this is the interdigitated electrode in order to have a current, in order to have an induced current. So to create certain kind of the things, phenomena inside. So we, we use the 5 volt, 7.5 volt and 10 volt, which is tolerable range of the human. And another thing that apart from the, this PEMMG diagram, we use the polycathode action trial, and this is a, another multifunctional glue because if you see this kind of the reaction, so there you have used the PAMA, we use the polycathode action trial with the PROMO diagram where we use the Williamson's reaction to synthesis this kind of the this PCLG diagram. And this diagram also works in the similar method, similar mechanism, but however, if you see the, uh, these are the commercial adhesives, if you see the PCLGs. 70, we have prepared this one. 
and these are the commercial like Abyssal, Tisal and Dormaban and these are the commercial analysis but the interesting thing in our biodiversity is that this biodiversity is high or uh, we have the high adhesion strength and that of the commercially available but we do have their own shortcomings we tried some kind of the animal experiments also so if you are seeing this kind of adhesive this is applied adhesive and we use the UV light and here we can see how it can be created how it can be create certain kind of the rigid strong surface over this kind of the liver this is a cadaveric liver we try and uh, this biodiversity bio also is, uh, is from the synthetic methodology this we overcome the weak adhesion on the wet surface high adhesion strength than that of the commercial adhesive so this adhesive not only we have used this kind of the only for this kind of the you know the the, the, the internal surgical applications but also we use in case of the drug delivery for example, you know, in hospitals where there is a complex surgery is going on, so people give the anesthesia. For example, some surgery will continue up to 24 hours. How many times the people will be anesthetized? Will be anesthetized. This is a big challenge. Because we have only the anesthesia that is called bokibhakai, which is only half life is only three hours. After three hours, the patients will get up. So we designed such kind of the biodiversity to introduce the bokibhakai as a vehicle and we use the, the animals and different kind of the animals and we use different kind of surgery and we use cut muscles. So this is the vehicle and drug. But interesting fact we have observed in this our experiment is when we are using the 5% only the bokibhakai, up to 10% of the bokibhakai, we can tune the drug release. This drug can be released over the 72 hours. That means almost three days. So that means this is how the patient will be anesthetized. This is your question. Actually, when the primary anesthesia, the, 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 the influence of the primary anesthesia will be over, the patient will try to get up, right? So when the patient will get up, there is a mechanical stimulation, right? So during the mechanical stimulation, the bioadhesive is applied. And this bioadhesive can release the drugs due to the mechanical, you know, the mechanical stimulation on the bioadhesive surface. And we have already exuded outside, in, inside our surface, our tissue surface. So that will help to diffuse the anesthesia inside and the patient will again anesthetize and he will sleep, right? This is the phenomena here and we find the blind pathology score and very less low level of the blind, blind pathology score and we also use some kind of the bokibhakai tissue concentrations. So we could find the tissue concentration is the minimal effective tissue concentration which is not toxic. This is the, there are many commercial prospects. So many people were interested before, uh, just two, two years ago, two years ago and uh, so some people are interested in our bioadhesives and we are still on the some part, some part we are carrying out, some part we are collaboratively, we are working out. So this is, if you see, these are the short, short summary of my work and this is the diagram grafted PAMA and PCLT we have, uh, I have introduced the two kind of the, you know, bioadhesives, basically these are the emerging tissue adhesives and carbon crossing tool chemistry for control of adhesion strength and elasticity which is very, very important here and the base bioadhesive formulation we can alter by using several kind of the additives to create it as a multifunctional. That's the, uh, that justifies the topic how we can create the multifunctional tissue adhesive. What kind of the challenges we could overcome? That's the significant hurdle in wound closure. One example I have already told you. And implantable electronics. One example also I told you that's a 3D grade graphene electrode and a mesh for abdominal surgery and tissue building implants. So these four are the mostly applications. So currently we have three kind of the consortium projects and apart from this work and we have three consortium projects that is going on in my laboratory and in collaboration with several industry, several you know, academic partners because we do not have all kind of facilities in our laboratory. We have material processing facilities but however a lot of collaborators help us our channelizing our ideas. So thanks to them and also thanks to my all collaborators and uh, there are also students, some students are involved and thank you very much for your kind attention. Yes, anyone? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you sir uh, for a very nice presentation actually. So uh, my question related to the lab is actually I am very curious to know about uh, is there any uh, exciting research related for this biology? See, it, I think it is an excellent question. So <coughs> Actually, we tried to store this bioadhesives. So this bioadhesive even can be within, within the value of six months, within the deadline of six months, we can use this bioadhesives. Again, when we are additives, its bioadhesive expire in many parts. But that we have not tried. But we have many technologies available to, you know, to avoid this kind of the problem. 
And we do have a production of the biodiversity. If you see that biodiversity is a base biodiversity formulation, you type, I told you, that's a base biodiversity formulation. Then we, we use the additive to alter this. So if you see the base biodiversity formulation, that's a very viscous and uh, it's a lifetime material. So we don't have any uh, issues up to a short period. Yeah. That's a, uh, Yes, we have been we have been characterized because this is a 30 minutes lecture. Yes. I didn't uh, go through this. We did MMR. We did uh, all the rheological characteristics, all the rheological you know, studies, mm -hmm. and we did uh, other kind of like uh, SPM and all those kind of things. We did. This is the storage modulus. Yes. 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 And we have a uh, good gel time, gelation time, and also we have all these uh, required rheological characteristics. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have a cryo NMR? Sorry? Uh, uh, we didn't use the cryo NMR. We used the hydrogen NMR, but this is uh, one of the characterization. But we did the gel permeation chromatography, GPC, uh, for this one. Yes. Uh, could we lecture that question? <laughs> You used some electrodes. Electrodes, sir. Uh, this is for comparison of the spectrum or the. Uh, this is not from electrodes. Okay. So, this electrodes we have yeah. used as an implant. That is a 3D G uh, IDE. That is a 3D graphene interdigitated electrode. So, usually the electrode is uh, usually if you see the implants, like cardiac implants and other implants, they are made up of some kind of electrodes. So, we use this kind of uh, graphene based electrode in order to have a conduction of the electrode. But at the same time, this should be biocompatible. And this formulation was biocompatible because uh, this is an excellent formulation that is prepared by Ramil Sass Laboratory in Northwestern University in USA. And we had this kind of, uh, those particular bio ink, that's a bio ink. And that bio ink is patented and that's a, uh, that's a biocompatible bio ink. It can be used for any kind of electrode, to prepare electrode based implants, you can say. So we use the bioadhesive basically to see the attachment. So how the bioadhesive is helping the attachment of the uh, this in the tissue. Yeah, uh, that's fine. But uh, what was my query is that that electrode is helping to do a certain kind of electrodes. <coughs> okay, its role is to conduct the electricity and uh, cure the biodiversity. Yes, because this is a two voltage. Uh, we try with five voltage, seven point five, and ten voltage with a very minimal voltage because this is for how the, our if you see our potential of the nerve muscles and nerve. And these are coming under very tolerable potential. And those tolerable potentials we have tried. Electricity, the kind of energy we are helping in making the power and one. Yes. This is this uh, this phenomena is published in nature paper, and we try to work further, and then we publish this advanced healthcare materials. And then also you mentioned about that you are using radicals to uh, free radicals. This free is free radicals to make some power and one. Yes, free radicals are very short-lived here. Actually, they are intermediate. So they are not creating anything. Any, they are just creating in the role of you know reactions. But they are not uh, depositing in our human body. Imagine if you react on this person. No, no. If you use the UV light, for example, this is my RSC blood cell is a layer, and you use the UV light, and this is a within very I mean very microseconds, and they are producing this kind of a free radical. And this free radical will combine with our human, the, the, the body tissue, there is a rupture, right? So they have, we have a lot of free radicals. And they form a covalent ring actually. So it, instead it is helping our human tissue, not creating any problem. And there are so many enzymes actually, side free radicals, in the free response. And yes, yes. But so but the problem is here. Free radical, there is a free radical. But if you are creating any kind of, the, there is a pot, so it is a local area only. So it's not creating any kind of uh, participating in any biochemical reactions. So I hope. Okay, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That experiment you are doing here in your lab or uh, in your collaborator's lab? Um, some experiment is there and some material based experiment. No, that is basically the animal based. Uh, animal based, no. Uh, we don't have any approval here. Animal oh, based. Okay. Because so we, the data you are taking to analyze yes, and we we oh. create we we show them a way how to inject this kind of things how to do the things and then we do it and data will come data get yes. from your collaborator yes. 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 agency yes. and all yes. that yes. okay
Okay, so once again, thank you very much for the nice talk. Sar Chaudhary, he is again in house speaker and uh, he is a faculty of mechanical department. He received his PhD from NIT Jalandhar and uh, Jamshedpur. Oh, Jamshedpur. Right, fine. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. And, uh, and, and he has written that uh, published around uh, more than 50 papers in SCI refereed journal. His research area includes hybrid energy system, biofuels, fuel cell technology, thermodynamics modeling, sustainability, etc. And uh, the very good thing for him is he has uh, 13 grant patents. I think uh, this is the number is uh, highest in the institute. It might be if I am not wrong. So that's very good. So I welcome Dr. Prasad uh, Chaudhary. Please. Good evening to all of you. Uh, today is my <coughs> pleasure to be a part of this program over here and what an opportunity to deliver a lecture on fuel cell technology and its integration which is a hybrid uh, approach towards the sustainability for the future energy systems over here. Mm -hmm. So before starting, first we are going to review about what related to the renewable, the concept which we have drawn related to renewable energy sources. So what is basically energy? Energy is the capacity to produce motion, work force, a change in shape, a change in form, whatever which we have already been gained by means of classical physics which we have already studied over here. But here, the energy exists in several forms, which is going to be needs to be transformed from one form to another form. Based on this, various thermodynamic laws has been developed that energy has been neither been created nor been destroyed. It is going to be transferred from one form to another form. But during this transformation, the losses of energy are going to be take place. But here, some new concepts have been drawn and work in this area, which through which a new technology has been developed. So that technology we are going to uh, discuss and we are going to present and how this energy transformation is plays a very significant role and vice versa change in energy we are going to reflect. So here we can see that the electrical energy if you are going to convert it in a chemical energy we require an electrolyzer and if you are from chemical to electrical we require a fuel cell technology. Similarly from chemical to mechanical we require an internal combustion engine uh, jet engine, gas turbine engine, even from the electrical to mechanical, we require the electric motor or we can generate. So this is a complete cycle based, based on which we are able to know or differentiate that how much the energy transformation takes from one form to another form and from that form to previous. So based on this, the energy is being classified. But here some resources of our energy is being further being classified in terms of uh, renewable and non-renewable sources over here. So renewable energy which we already know by means of solar, biomass, wind, geothermal <coughs> and uh, hydropower. This has immense potential over here but the main major drawback is that the harnessing portion of related to this is some having some constraints. As compared to this, it is a uh, most reliable right now currently they are the user, user are depending upon the <coughs> non-renewable sources. The government and the other sectors are trying to migrate from this sector to this sector as you know. So this is the reason. From this portion, so to this they are going to migrate. So based on this, during this migration, new technologies and new energy system and needs to be developed and some are under developing. So in during this presentation, we are going to discuss about the energy from other sources, which is a key potential for a uh, sustainable future energy system over here. So here we are going to focus on going to deliberate upon the hydrogen cell which is in capability to convert the hydrogen gas to oxygen to electricity over here by means of the electrochemical reaction 
And if you are going to operate this fuel cell in a reverse mode, it also works as an electrolyzer over here. By means that uh, we are going to split the water into oxygen as well as the hydrogen particles. Okay, so that concept we are going to discuss and how it will going to be fitted and uh, integrated with the other systems to make it a hybrid one. Right now in the current energy scenario, that part I am going to deliberate. And based on that, that re current research, what we have done till now, during this area, we are going to deliver over here. So basically a fuel cell is an electrochemical device that converts the chemical energy of a fuel into electrical energy through an electrochemical reaction of an hydrogen containing fuel with oxygen, which is an, another oxidizing agent over here. So generally when the fuel cell comes in mind, generally the uh, person thinks about that it is a basically a battery over here. So let me clear the fuel cell and the battery are both are different thing over here. The battery is an energy storing device which stores the energy over here. But in case of fuel cell, it having a two channels over here. You can see that it have the fuel channel and another side the air channel. Through which fuel channel, any fuel which is containing a hydrogen which can be supplied over here and other side that is air we can supply based on this here anode, cathode and electrolyte a ceramic material is here and during this electrochemical reaction takes place and generate a DC power over here. So here the fuel cell can produce electricity till when the continuous supply of air and fuel is there but in case of battery it is only going to be stored the energy once it is going to be utilized, discharged. Again, it is going to be recharged. But there is no concept related to recharging such a thing for the uh, fuel cell over here. So, based on this fuel cell, its development stage, if you are going to deliver it, is basically being originated in uh, 1839 by Sir William Gross, who have conducted the first electrochemical reaction over here and if you are going to study about the timeline so what the initiative and the milestone which has been placed by the uh, different researchers particularly from the UK which have developed a solid oxide uh, ion fuel cell which has been used by the NASA and later in 1960 the heat produced a fuel cell based electrical power system which has been used in several uh, NASA Apollo missions over here. With later in 1960s to 2000, various other fuel cell technologies have been developed. Based on that fuel cell, there are different applications have been derived. Just for the automotive part, high power application, even for the small batteries and the uh, cell phones also, we can use this <coughs> fuel cell over here. So recently, even with the a large scale, we are able to use this fuel cell for the CHP purpose. That is the combined heat and power for the residential buildings over here. So which is an, a good option in, pay, in place of using the generators over here. So that part it is basically over here. And generally if you are going to know about the what is the basic structure of the fuel cell. Fuel cell consists of an, five basic components over here. That is the electrode, electrolyte, catalyst and bipolar heat and gas diffusion layer. So here these are the basic five components of the fuel cell. Based on this, their operating principle is going to be defined. If you are going to see this figure, we can see that these are the bipolar plates and here this is the membrane over here. This fuel cell technology is also referred as a membrane technology also. And here the catalyst has been generally been used as a platinum catalyst. So right now due to this, this technology is right now currently uh, not all sufficient but uh, some research are going on in order to uh, replace this precious metal just like uh, platinum over here. Even the uh, ISRO is also working in this area and they have given the, the response project over here in order to replace this platinum uh, material over here so that a new novel catalyst material can be found out in this area over here. So whenever the electrochemical reaction takes place, we have the three phase boundary over here. Three phase boundary means the iron, gases and the electrodes are going to be there. Based on that, we are going to have the DC current over here. If you are going to see the electrochemical reaction over here, there are the bonds are going to be there, which is going to be for an iron over. And based on that, if you are going to have the 2D and 3D uh, distribution of platinum, which is 
around the higher moment. We can see that how this platinum catalysts are going to be active, and based on that, the current will going to be formed. So based on that, the graphitized carbon and conducting ceramic plays a very significant role during the electrochemical reaction over here. So if you are going to compare this fuel cell with the engine-based technology over here, so in, by this two simple diagram we can illustrate that if we want to harness the chemical energy of a fuel, we require another system through which a thermal energy from the fuel can be extracted. Then one another engine we require which is going to be converted into mechanical energy, and from mechanical energy to electrical energy. We required another IC. So here three engines we are going to require. So generally the energy present in the fuel it is basically a low grade over here. In thermodynamic perspective, the energy is being classified in two forms. That is the low grade energy and high grade energy. High grade energy means that directly we can use it in form of electricity over here. And in the low grade energy, we require some pre-processing of the fuel, just like a coal. We cannot directly harness the energy from that. But in case of battery or anything, we can directly use in form of current over here. So based on this, the system has been classified. But in case of chemical energy of a fuel to electricity, we can directly use the fuel cell over here. So if we are going to see the technological base thing, it is going to be replaced with three engines over here. So it is in terms of uh, performance and efficiency, it is going to be regarded as a most promising agent which is capable to produce a zero emission during the operation and, and in terms of integration that how it is going to be integrated with the other thermal system then if you are going to be have so if you are this thing then generally in the any system it basically works in different cycles also just like a Carnot cycle Rankine cycle, Brayton cycle, all these, any engines are going to be designed in cycle. Okay, so generally that cycle, conventional cycle, having the low power, low efficiency, and low sustainability index. This low sustainability index we have developed from our end, which is then reflect the exergetic parameter. In as per the thermodynamic law, we have known as the entropy of the universe continuously goes on increasing. Based on that concept, we have developed the exergetic point and based on that exergy, we have developed this low or this sustainability index. Based on this sustainability index, we will able to predict whether this whatever component or any system is sustainable or not. In terms of how much the energy it is utilizing and how it will going to give an environmental impact based on its, its utilization. So, if you are going to integrate this fuel cell with the other energy system, ultimately the, it will result to high power output, high thermal efficiency, and high sustainability. So, based on this, we have drawn in concept that the integration of this fuel cell will going to be a next approach towards the sustainability of the fuel cell. So, here some uh, classifications which we have made. Uh, between the uh, IC engine and the fuel cell uh, batteries over here, that how this IC engine and the batteries are further being demonstrated in terms of energy storing, and another one is the energy producing devices over here. So, how much the energy is being converted from one form to another form, and how the energy is being stored, all these things are being basically being shown in forms of uh, differentiation that how it is going to be. So here, if you are going to draw the performance-wise efficiency over here, so fuel cell is quite different over here in terms of engine because well, engines are the mechanical part which is basically being governed by the Carnot principle. But here, the fuel cell, these are not a engine part; they are not mechanical part. They are not governed by the Carnot principle. So therefore. They have the different performance curve over here. So ultimately, this fuel cell have high efficiency in place of this IC engine over here, which is based on the Carnot efficiency over here. So if you see the applicability of the fuel cell, later previously generally it has been used as a rocket fuel and for industrial gases. But with the development in the material technology and the compactness 
of this fuel cell. It can be used for the residential fuel cell, even in the battery, uh, fuel cell based cars are all going to be developed. And right now with the further advancement, they are being used in the fuel cell based trucks, even in the power plants, uh, aerogates, portable FCs and all rail cars, they all these are going to be capable to give a power output by means of this fuel cell over here. Based on this, the fuel cell offers a huge power spectrum over here. Fuel power spectrum in terms of that is 10 to the power 2, 10 to the power 6 over here. Based on this, it will have a huge power range over here. From cell phones to power up the moon, from marines and the power. Based on this, the fuel cell has been further having the broader classification over here. Broader classification in terms of how it is going to be uh, integrated. Currently, uh, the development of the fuel cell in the area of developing hybrid based car. They have right now previously some prototypes which been, which has already been showcased by the automakers who are renowned of automakers over here. That is the Toyota, Honda, Delmar, all these they have developed the hydrogen integration based fuel cell over here. But right now the Toyota and the BMW and the other automotive sector are shifting towards the in-house integration of the this fuel cell within the engine. So they are working in the area of hydrogen engine. So that part we have that, uh, achieved in the area of gas turbine system over here. We have integrated the gas turbine uh, with fuel cell technology over here. And some findings related to that we are going to show over here. So this is a layout of a uh, Honda FC powertrain over here. That here the hydrogen tank and the engine and the fuel cell based system has been integrated. <coughs> this all things are already been showcased during this last auto expo over here. And this is the uh, layout where the driving range is being shown at how much power and most of this the research and the type of car has been delivered by the Honda and Toyota are the major leading manufacturers of the fuel cell based vehicle over here. So with the development of the fuel cell, the main power thing is the hydrogen. So for that hydrogen, we required a hydrogen based infrastructure over here. Right now, the Tata uh, power has tried to develop some type of thing and the Reliance has also taken initiative in the developing the hydrogen based stations over here. Right now, this one is being shown by the other sectors over here. Even in the India, the Reliance Power and other things, they are majorly working in this area to develop an uh, hydrogen based station and infrastructure over here. So this is an uh, uh, Toyota based uh, fuel cell bus, which is being showcased in the fuel cell based expo over here, which is having a nine, 90 kilowatt EEFC fuel cell step over here, which is a DC motor and a hydrogen tank of around 50 mega Pascal. So this thing they in India currently being enlarged by the Tata Motors, which they have showcased in their last expo over here. So this is a residential layout over here that how this fuel cell can be applicable for the uh, residential purposes also over here. So these are the, the basically types of fuel cell based on that operating principle that ranges for what application you want to use. So generally, I have worked in the area of high temperature fuel cell over here, that is solid oxide fuel cell, which is having a current efficiency of 50 to 60 percent over here. And this some application, this application is particularly been used for the power plant and high power application over here. So generally, in the solid oxide fuel cell, it offers in two forms over here, that is the planar module, another one is the uh, tubular module. Here the electrolytes are made, uh, electrolyte, uh, anode and cathode material are made up of uh, nickel based ratite stabilized zirconia and stabilized zirconia with lanthanum strontium magnetite and based on this offers a huge fuel flexibility of The concept of flex fuel has been generally been, right now has been given our honorable uh, Transport Minister uh, Nitin Gadkari has right now showcased the uh, Toyota based flex fuel based car they have shown. Basically that concept is being used over here. Here 
the they have integrated the fuel cell with the engine oil in which they can power the fuel cell by any fuel any fuel which is going to have this hydrogen oil which is offer a fuel flexibility no hardware related to for corrosion even it's an high having high efficiency it is available in various power options also and the limit of operating temperature ranges from 600 to 1000 degree centigrade based on this it offer a huge potential to have an electrochemical reaction across the three phase boundary where the steam reforming and water gas react, uh, reaction takes place ultimately as a by product they form a water vapor that water is so ionized with that it can be used for other purposes also so this is an hybridization approach where fuel cell can be used for in various forms over here for portable devices uh, large large power generation transport even for other uh, applications also even just like for cameras also this fuel cell are going to be used over here. generally in form, small cylinder based thing this hydrogen can be used over here. so based on this we can use this hydrogen for various applications this we have already published in our recently last international journal of hydrogen energy where we have given a huge comprehensive review about how this fuel cell technology can be taken to a next level for the power generation so if you are going to see about the term hybridization how this hybridization is going to be work so i just going to be say explain it out in a simple word this is an a fuel cell Based hybrid layout over here, where the mechanical system, electronic system, and fuel cell system are these three systems are being plugged together. Where the fuel cell system, the air and the heat management system used over here, which generates a DC power, which gives it to a converter, to a battery and inverter, to an vehicle control, to power up the motor, and ultimately from motor to transmission. So, in based on this, this is a basic layout through which. This fuel cell and the hybrid cars are generally going to be there. Based on this basic concept, several modes have been derived over by the leading manufacturers over here. The leading manufacturers, just like the Toyota, Hyundai, Honda, and Renault. If you are going to see the market capture part over here, the Toyota is the leading one over here, which is working in this direction of research over here. And if you are going to compare the energy and exergetic performance over here for different uh, biofuel powered uh, car, fuel cell, electric, hybrid, and conventional one, you can see the fuel cell based and a good promising source over here. And then come after the hydrogen based hydrogen over here. But if you, in case of hydrogen based hydrogen engine, we have some limitation that the our technology is not so mature over here because handling the hydrogen is more crucial over here because it is in a highly inflammable over here so safety constraints are there so right now uh, here this hydrogen based engine is in a way where we can explore our research over here in this direction and currently i have got an Search CRG project in this area where we are going to integrate the fuel cell technology with the existing engine over here. So it is a small <coughs> mile step towards the hydrogen based engine over here. So right now, within last week, I have got the search project in this area of around 47 lakh over here. Where we can going to integrate the hydrogen based fuel cell in the existing engines over here. So it is going to help us out in the reducing the emission as well as the fuel, uh, having the fuel efficiency right now as per our calculation if you are going to account generally if you are going to uh, have the diesel vehicle over here it is going to give an uh, average mileage of around 20 or 22 but if you are going to integrate the fuel cell based thing we are going to expect around 45 percent yeah in increment in this case some test and the Critical performance and simulations we have carried out in this area, and some novel uh, graphs we have developed over here, through which we can gauge the performance of any thermal system over here. Any suppose if you are going to serve, like suppose this our body itself we want to check. 
So some parameters, standard parameters has been decided over here. If you go for any blood test, based on the standard parameter, they can, doctor going to analyze that this parameter is going to be increased. So this portion is not going to be functioned properly or this type of uh, results or anything you are going to have. So based on that, every system is going to have an its thermal, uh, thermal performance parameter. Based on this performance parameter, a map can be drawn. And based on that map, without performing that system, we can predict that if you are going to operate within this range, the system is going to give this its best optimum performance. Fuel consumption, if you are going to compare the hybrid one and the here, is going to be the best over here. And if you are going to see the modes, that how the modes related to this, the fuel cell is going to be worse. The fuel cell is going to give the power to the DC converter and the motor to run. And this is further being plugged by the battery. So additional power can be managed by the battery. This is for the high power mode. Okay. And if you go for the uh, low power mode, the fuel cell gives the uh, DC current converter to the motor. And additionally, based on this, the excess power can be stored in the battery to charge the battery. Another one is the standard power mode. Fuel cell gives the power to DC to run the motor. And based on that, this battery can be used as a uh, optional mode to uh, power up the other utility system. Another one that based on this DC is fuel cell. This DC, instead of operating this motor, directly it is going to be used to motor. So based on this, this is a charge mode, standard power mode, <coughs> high power and low power. That right now in the vehicle, Right now, several modes options are going to be delivered. So basically, that mode is basically this thing over here. Based on that, we can develop uh, other modes over here by integrating the fuel cell over here. This is shows the how the fuel cell with the PV rays, that photovoltaic rays can also be integrated in the area of hybridization with the nickel part over here. This part is also basically uh, related to the hybrid <coughs> For, uh, fuel cell based uh, photovoltaic system over here. This is the current uh, fuel cell integration, their demonstration status, and the energy here you can <coughs> use over here. So, several scales over here that configuration has been shown where the fuel cell can be integrated to Britain cycle, Valentine cycle, refrigeration cycle, also diesel reformer. So within this, uh, we have tested around three to four configuration, and this mm -hmm. is my last configuration which we have tested over here in the gas turbine cycle where we have integrated and uh, how to harness the waste heat. Any thermal system we generate any waste heat. So that waste heat is a pre promising option to harness it to power up the fuel cell. So through waste heat, we can use to generate. Power power also over here. So this configuration and this SR results we have published in International Journal of Hydrogen Energy over here. And this is my scholar uh, that Abhina Vahan Sinha who has worked in the area of double recuperation hybrid system where they have worked that how this waste heat can be used to power up the other systems also. This is some uh, thermodynamical model which we have developed and we have worked in the area of entropy generation minimization. That mm -hmm. as per law, we know that entropy is going to be increased universally over here as the temperature increases. But we have some keys over here by means we can reduce the level of entropy. When we are going to reduce the entropy, ultimately we are going to increase the efficiency of any system over here. We have also performed the simulation part over here related to the planar configuration where this how this fuel cell can be operated in different forms over here. Flow configuration if we are going to vary the direction, the different performance we are going to have. So these are the uh, electrochemical performance curves when the impact of high, how much the temperature and pressure is going to be have over here. And based on that, the 73% efficiency we have achieved over here. So we are working in this area that this efficiency we can achieve in the vehicle part also. 
the 33 or 35 percent conventionally they are going to have to reach that efficiency to around 75 or 60 percent energy. So here this is our last research which is been published in the International Journal of uh, uh, Energy Conversion and Management Impact Factor 11 over here where we have used the fine saw dust, popular dust and almond shell, one shell to power up this fuel cell over here. Based on this, the gasification process we have achieved and these results are quite promising over here. So these are the you know, uh, unique performance map over here. Based on that, any fuel consumption, we can predict the how much efficiency we are going to get for that any system. So this type of system, we can draw it for any thermal system, whether it will be a light or this laptop or this projector, any system which is going to consume any form of energy, we can develop this type of energy maps over here. This type of energy map through which we can predict the optimal performance of that system over here. Based on this research, we have published around 44 papers over here, which is uh, SCI and Stoker group. And based on that, two patents we have um, achieved during, and based on that, we have got the grant. So these are some of our recent findings and publications in this, particularly in this area of fuel cell technology over here. Thank you, Dr. Kutar, for a wonderful talk. It was quite interesting, so you people can ask at least. We have to build this our design to Tata Power, and they have shown their existing design over here. So they discussed with it to try to integrate both things so that new type of uh, application based things they can offer. So you so, yes, the Tata Power is working. They are willing to show this patent over here, but uh, they are still in the discussion phase over here. And what is the MCA law? To scale up this one. Uh, generally, in terms of modular, uh, uh, we have from 1 kilowatt to around uh, 500 megawatt we are going to, uh, to scale down to that one, scale from 1 to 2, based upon the size and modularity as per the requirement that can be scale up and scale down. Depending on where, the generally a DC power we are going to have. Sir. So based on that, uh, the transfer in water system which we require, so from uh, 12 volt to uh, depending upon the range it will go into this. Yeah. Yeah, Ampere are we are going to be different over here. In terms of ampere R, if you are going to add, then around 150 to uh, around 300 ampere R it will be here. Based upon. Yes, sir. Bus uh, for that we have to scale up this one. It will going to be increased over here. Any other question? While producing energy or electricity from this fuel cell, we need some catalyst. For example, platinum. But this platinum is very expensive. So, my question is how are we going to cut the cost? We have to switch to other organic based catalyst material over here through which we can cut down this price of related to usage of catalyst over here. Those who are working in this area of electrochemistry related to particularly the catalyst part over here, they can able to find out some other novel material over here, which can give a best alternative to replace this platinum with electric, uh, catalyst in form, this material. Last question, Dr. And 
we won't decide. I think the others are developing more tightly. But it is, uh, we, we have all this electronic is more important. Uh, what good amount, amount of gold? The amount is the micro gold. Because we think of steel can be cutting uh, the So it is good this amount is not that high. So that is why we first come by. So I have a short arrow of this great year then. Yes, sir. And it is not that short. It is short. Uh, what I need to say is that the first level go by name, first level go by amount. So when you make a steel field to uh, nanometer steel, so total amount is micro. I mean, in a gold uh, platinum, micro of course nothing. This is how it is. So thin film technology and in previous where I have shown this, this technology is also called as a membrane technology also. So basically they are using this platinum in form of thin film over here. But still now the cost is high over here. Therefore ultimately we have to reduce, replace this material by some other novel material. Right now this platinum are generally being used in form of this micro sheets or parallel sheets. So that fabrication part related to this platinum thin sheet over here is quite challenging. For that, processing charge is quite high over. So ultimately, this uh, membrane technology is expensive in terms of fabrication part. The major part of this is being taken by the fabricators over here because that fabricating the platinum in small sheets over here is quite expensive. Even the material, if you are going to purchase or raw material, it would be quite expensive. And for fabricating that part in sheets over here, also quite expensive. But the trial cost around 30 years. Yes. So it is not that expensive. Yes. And that these are turned down with first round 20 years. So platinum cost comes to the trial. Therefore, it has been referred as a white gold over here. Platinum has been referred as a white gold. If you are going to compare with this, price-wise, it's quite expensive. Yes, sir. It's quite free. Yes, sir. You can rare material. So, sir, thank you for the nice presentation. Actually, I have a question about the gold ring around this one that we can have in this picture. They have free from corrosion over here because they are ceramic materials they are going to be. There is no such metal star they are looking at. The metals are going to be used over here in this area. Then they are going to have a corrosion part over. But there is little, uh, some cases have been reported in terms of carbon formation over here. If you are going to use the cells over here, particularly fuel and air, some period of time the carbon deposition is going to be there. Due to which their electrochemical performance is going to be down. There is no corrosion, but their performance is going to be down due to having scale formation. So that thing is going to be work in this area to have the good purity level of the input content that is the oxidizing and the hydrogen content. Therefore, this fuel cell also offers an internal reforming over here. So within that set temperature, internal reforming takes place and the good amount of hydrogen can be react there itself. So there is a no and other environmental impact as a byproduct from this fuel cell. Uh, any, uh, any time response to transient based analysis we are working over here, but uh, at a long scale, if you are want, we are not but, exploring. Uh, there are two uh, smart activators, as you call it, smart material. We have a time response of 10 minutes, uh, which has a uh, transition section. So, what about the sampling response in the load system? Uh, we have, haven't explored in the area of smart material over here that is related to in the integration. I think it is in the research place over here. But what is the other hydrogen cells are working over Yes, sir. Hydrogen cells are working over here. Right now, this Toyota within the India. No, that is the hydrogen cells are also 
they are friends are also some local pilots and other they are working over here that are Ayushir Paridabad, they are working in this area of fuel cell based vehicles. So their main aim is to develop all these fuel cell based vehicles over here. The government has also taken an initiative in this area. Yes. Right now, BHEL, uh, they are working in this area to uh, develop a hybrid uh, power plant over here. To convert this conventional thermal power plant to a hybrid one because right now due to having environmental impact and other uh, government regulatory bodies over here they impose them to operate within their some certain way to prevent from other environmental impact so bhcl and csr uh, csr uh, MP, uh, sorry csr kolkata they are working in this area to how to integrate this fuel cell with the existing thermal power plant to make it a more sustainable technology for the future of the future. Thank you. Okay, this last thing just I want to note that the alternate fuel we are using to produce the hydrogen. And uh, as for uh, available fuel which is more uh, convenient to for this one, A. And what are the advantages we are using diesel already? Most certainty, if you are going to have in terms of water. No, but that is again a problem if you use water to take the hydrogen and oxygen, both are different. Then we have to arrange that water. Water, we can directly use this water to power up the fuel cell in form of electrolyzer. If in reverse mode, if you are going to operate, it is going to be work as save water is itself a you know. Sea water no, can also be used to work. But in, in this area, how no, no, I'm talking about the rain, the that water, rain. that is the hard. So and that's why... Even the biofuels can also be used to work here in case of uh, this fuel cell. Also. Because that fuel cell any model which you have shown that we have to supply that hydrogen as well as the... Any fuel. Basically, they are at that temperature. They suffer and reform the process over here. Any fuel which is containing mm -hmm. any hydrogen content, through the forming reaction, they can harness the hydrogen to power the electrochemical reaction. Okay, no, that's right. No. So it offers the fuel flexibility. I'm not from this field that you know. No, no, it so offers, therefore, uh, it but, is offering fuel flexibility. And everywhere we are listening that the hydrogen. A new term has been introduced flex fuel. Huh. So, based on that flex fuel, any fuel which is containing hydrogen over here, that can be suitable to generate power. Pure form of hydrogen is generally pure. Hydrogen is not available readily available in a pure form. It is generally mixed with another form. So that thing within the reforming, we can use the hydrogen over here. So no separate reformer is being required to harness the extract hydrogen from any fuel. Within that, we can directly supply. Even the diesel, we can supply. Yes. That's right. That's right. That is my concern, or you can say my confusion. Diesel, ethanol, petrol, is... anything you can. That's fine. That, that's why my concern is in the newspaper we are reading that, that uh, hydrogen <coughs> based vehicles are very good for the environment. Yes, it is going to be the but if, if game changer technology for the future in the area of automotive. Uh, that we are reading, yes. and uh, I believe that obviously that all yes. researchers are saying, so I have to believe, yes. but just for as I was saying, this is my confusion. So, Get the clarification for that. Just I want to know if diesel we are using already to, you know, they inject the hydro hydrogen to use this vehicle. Then already diesel we are using or petrol we are using or some alternative. Any fuel is there. There is a use possibility to integrate this fuel cell with the engine over here. Once we are going to integrate this, it is generally going to that diesel. First we diesel supply to the uh, fuel cell and the diesel. Some unutilized diesel we can supply to the uh, engine room. based on the DC power and the fuel cell based power. Both we are going to have, and based on that, this entire system can be powered. So, it basically, it works in the parallel system over here, which is highlights the heat. Of so, in one, one of the slide you were saying that if you use this technique by integration and all that, yes. then the fuel efficiency will increase. Yeah, definitely. So, right. that is a, one reason that seems to be yes, good. Sir. that which will reduce, at least we will use uh, less amount of uh, diesel or uh, fuel, whichever yes. we are using. 
No, 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 sir. In the case of electrolyzer, if you are going to use electrolyzer, so produce hydrogen from there, then take it to there. No, 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 sir. It then depends upon how much the hydrogen production if you are going to have. If you are going for an, uh, to store the hydrogen for a long endurance over here, then a storage tank that metal hydride are going to be available over here, which is having the capability of, it can store around 3 liters over here. It is not three liters of hydrogen. Yeah, three liters of hydrogen. But yeah, for you could have hydrogen as a fuel, not water as a fuel. Water is required to split it in a oxygen and hydrogen. Not instant conversion. Why do you have to hydrogen? See, that, that was my concern. Is it possible to combine with those yeah, both the things that we put the ice cube or water, and the system has been integrated in that way? That for the convert. initial startup, we require some other fuel. Other, we can directly. Don't switch to okay, that hydrogen. is another problem, and we yes. have to integrate that system. But yes, therefore, we can take hydrogen over the water. So, once it is going to be in a running phase over there, then we can cut down and then go for that hydrogen. Uh, that, that I was thinking, no, no. take. Uh, for start up, for starting, <coughs> you have a battery. Then battery, we can uh, have a motor at which phase. Yes, sir. But what is store that is coming? How far and how deep? You take hydrogen from the system, you don't convert water. But if there is a big shark or big chain running, then there will be water, hydrogen, water for hydrogen. Depending on what type of electrolyzer you are going to use. Hydrogen is a hydrogen of Loge as a fuel, water never only. Like now there is CNG. So, single hydrogen is a big deal. Yes, uh, but sir, my, my concern is as like train and all that they are uh, big in size. Is it possible to set up this conversion from yes, water to yes, hydrogen yes. also? That also we set up in that. In train, we just fill up water. Uh, we fill up the water and that will work. Generally, sir, in the train, we can directly get the DC power. See, I am trying to relate things what in morning you were saying. In starting, uh, <coughs> that is invention, but later on, after some refinement, obviously that the bigger things will convert into the small things. And they will come to that small vehicle also later on. Might be. Actually, there is a problem is you think water requires a huge amount of energy. That time you think it's platinum is gold, no? Is it enough to? It will help the conversion, you know, it will reduce the energy required to split water. Otherwise, splitting of water in the general laboratory is the next thing for them. Oh. So require a bigger amount of energy. Finally, we have to go to the filling station. That is compulsory. Now, there are a lot of we are getting funded or special funding. Another five years it will be funded. But for drugs and those things, it will be a metal alternative in terms of the battery cell. But CNG has become the issue. But now CNG has become the issue. Who states it in the end? Who states it in the end? Ah yes, you can, but ah yeah. So we have a poster session after this and we can continue our discussion with the endless time. So we have to put comma and put stuff somewhere. Yes. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. so thank you. Thank you. Thank you.